Hey, everybody, welcome to this issue of Staffing Monthly, where we are taking head on some of the major challenges that are facing our industry. And there are some serious things that are changing. As Bob Dylan said 60 years ago, the times they are changing. And more recently, we've heard from Risha Mahotra from Aviante talking about their cyclical changes that we need to be ready for that we're sort of used to and we're kind of waiting to swing back. But then there's been some structural changes since the pandemic, the digital shift, the, the, the workforce gap. All these things have created this confluence of challenges that has structurally changed the staffing industry. And you need to be aware of this. And I've actually invited somebody that lives out in the future. They live out on the horizon. They are actually the director of strategic solutions for Express Employment International. So they are out on the horizon looking at what's going on in this industry. So they can say, hey, this is staffing. This is what buyers are doing, what they want. This is the technology that we need to be looking at and how we need to operate to stay relevant and thrive in this next chapter of staffing. And I'm actually really pleased to welcome Will Scovera to Staffing Monthly. Will, thanks for being here. Thanks, Dan. Great to, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, I, I've actually been uh, really, really blessed to get to know you. I was excited to connect at Aviante Connect and, and hear you share your thoughts Obviously, really big news with Express and the big change uh, with Simple VMS. I, I think that's exciting, but I think it's a harbinger. So let's start there. Let's start with what is it that you're seeing in your role as the director of strategic solutions that is different with staffing that's sort of making a huge organization like Express make that fundamental change? Because that's not easy. Yeah, no, it's in it, it is not easy. And and uh, thank you for the for the introduction. Um, so when we you know, when we think about what's next and where we're going and and how we want to want to approach that and basically meet the clients where they are when it comes to technology. You know, our approach is you know, we see that there needs to be time to or time to fill needs to be increased. Right. Or, or decrease. Excuse me. So we need the speed to be able to deliver talent along with removing some barriers for clients to get access to that talent. Right. So when you think about platform staffing and, and Rich talked about it a lot, the, the flow there of being able to deliver a talent pool that is readily available and qualified quickly to your clients will be the next iteration in this in this industry that will take us to another level. And it's going to be based on technology. Right. It's going to it's that one to one relationship of picking up the phone and calling a candidate for a job will be outpaced by using technology or a you know an app to deliver that message um, so that individuals can make that selection and, and find a new place to work quickly, right? And on the same side, we're gonna use other VMS, we're gonna use other technologies like a VMS um, to deliver that as well. You know, so you'll see scheduling tools, you'll see optimization um, of vendors. So it's just gonna continue to grow. And I think when when you really think about it, Right now, what's old is new again, right? We we took orders for three years, right, in this industry. That's all yeah. we did. We took orders yeah. after the pandemic. Now we're out there earning again, right? We're out there kicking, fighting, scratching to try to find orders. But then we also still have to have that ability to deliver that talent quickly. So identifying talent, which has been difficult over the last three years, yeah. is now also linked with identifying opportunities for that talent. So you know, we experienced, if you don't put somebody to work, you're going to lose them. Right. And so that's, that's where we are again and still, but now it's, you got to have those jobs too. And those are hard to find. So we're, it's just a, and I think that speaks to the structural thing, but for those of us who've been around a long time, this is, it's, it's old as new again. I mean, this reminds me of back early 2010s and yeah, you know, we're out there fighting. I, I agree from a business development standpoint, it definitely feels that way again, but I feel like I feel like what we're selling is is different, and I feel like the buyers are they they're looking for something different. I it's funny. I I, I just interviewed somebody that has an amazing success story, uh, but she told me that when she first got into staffing, like she she placed an ad and she had to think like in the newspaper, and she had to think about how do I write it so it's cost efficient with the lines because you paid right. per line back then, right? And like she was telling these stories, and I'm like, wow, that's crazy! Like how far we've come. And that would be what it is. Like you'd place an ad, somebody would call in, you would talk to them, maybe invite them in for a cup of coffee, interview them, send them out to work. Like it, it worked like that. 
but that doesn't scale. There's more employers today. They're more sophisticated. There's more job seekers. So let's let's talk about that connectivity, the, the platform staffing. Is that is that really what buyers need? Why have they moved to that way where they want to be more integrated to the workforce? And does that mean that staffing gets cut out eventually? So I, you know, I think that's the fear, right? I think in our industry, we're scared that we're going to get cut out. But I think those that adopt the ability to qualify candidates quickly and so they can take on that cost and, and that procedure and processes so that they're a readily available pool for the clients that can then turn will turn orders on into those pools to acquire talent quickly that that's the that's the role that staffing will play right we're going to be able to take your prereqs build them out identify candidates have them ready to go when you're ready and when you're ready you can turn it on here come your candidates right and now you're now you're using a contingent lake a contingent workforce so you're also you know flexible you're able to optimize your spend, right? And you're able to just build a workforce that's that meets what your client's needs are from a client perspective. So you're not, you know, just throwing bodies at it like we used to do, you know, a yeah. long time ago. Um, but, you know, you're actually being strategic in how you're utilizing your contingent labor force and you're using your staffing agency to basically just build that out so that you have it readily available so that when they come on board, it's a it's much more efficient than it would be if you had to go identify them yourself, get them in, orientate, take them through the process, bring them on, get them started. So, so that makes a ton of sense. So really the way that you're looking at it with serving customers is they could do it themselves. They have access to similar tools that we do. And obviously mm -hmm. the workforce is the workforce. So that, so that was even playing field, if you will. However, there would be a cost to them doing it themselves, right? And then there's a cost to us doing it. So if we can actually do it better and faster and really make the margin, if you will, on the economy of scale, right. so we can actually deliver that, I guess that cost center them cheaper with the same or better product, then they're still gonna outsource. They're still gonna need to be that, that piece of staffing. Is that is kind of what you're seeing? Yeah, and, and so I think when you think about where we sit here at Express, we're a full service group, right? We we yeah. play in all the verticals and, and we're gonna find people accidentally. Right. And so if you write a targeted job description, it's just that it's targeted. It's a narrow scope. But if we're recruiting for the hundred of postings that we have available, we're going to find people accidentally that may be a great fit for your organization. Yeah. Right. And so if you're again, if you're targeted and the scope is narrow, you're only going to get what you're looking for. Right. Or, yeah. you know, in, in, or people that are at, excuse me, you're only going to get what people are looking for. You're going to get what they're looking for because that's what they see in your job description. While we're over here, multiple job descriptions out there, multiple job postings, we're going to get candidates from every kind of walk of life, every kind of skill set that may accidentally fall into our lap. That's a great fit for you. And you're never going to get that person because they weren't looking at your job yeah. description. So that I think I think that actually raises a fascinating point right there is there's two, there's two things that staffing agencies can do really well that would be very hard for just an employer to do one to your point like they can post a job but if we can get better and we have actually a better strategic approach to posting jobs we can get greater workforce coverage but in addition to that it's not likely that an employer a direct employer is going to be doing like i'll call it database management you know, or audience management, right. or a staffing agency, if they really leaned into that and they said, hey, we're going to build our tribe and these are going to be our people. And we're really going to build relationships, even with people that we might not have placed yet or might never place. We're going to build that strong database. The company that might try to do it themselves, they might only get the narrow band of people that happen to be looking at the exact time that that ad posts. So they're going to get the very top layer of active job seekers and they're never going to tap into passivity. So, so the staffing agency, if they do those two things really, really well, the kind of job ad strategy and and kind of audience management, you know, or candidate management, um, I, I think they actually have they can provide real value and at scale they can do it cheaper. Right. Yeah. I mean, the the database that a that a staffing agency is going to have. I mean, we can go back sixty days, thirty days, ninety days, you know, and check activity and see if and, and tap those people and see if they're interested. Right. To your point, if you put a job description out you're going to get the tip of the spear, right? You're going to be, you're going to get the people that are actively looking, 
while we may able we may be able to just you know wake up a phone of somebody that's you know kind of got frustrated with their job search 30 days ago and just said you know what i'm going to take a little break i'm going to do uber lyft whatever it may be yeah and now oh this opportunity is here and if you did that on your own as a client you you would never you would never wake that person's phone up with the job posting yeah. that you put out there so we can go get and on the other side we also have a, a qualified group of workers that are probably going to come off assignment at some point yeah that we can redeploy right which is a win for the staffing agency right because that's where the money is when you redeploy but yeah. it's also a win for the client because now we have a proven worker that we know and trust that we can send to you do you think and this is a bit of a, a sidebar and i don't want to i don't mean a rabbit hole here but do you think the staffing industry underutilizes or underappreciates redeployment i think it's becoming more of a of an upfront topic you know i think we've always kind of just it is what it is in the industry right but i now i think through some of the you know, some of the analytics and some of the data that's out there we're now able to see what the true cost is of onboarding somebody and how we can monetize that in redeployment so obviously once you've done all the heavy lifting up front you get them out you make your money back on that first however many hours it is and then you're able to continue them working um, get that loyalty from them. Obviously, that's just frosting on top of the cake as you go. And I hate to talk about people in the sense that we're monetizing them, but you know, it, it is what it is in this industry. I know it's. I always feel cringy when I'm like, you you treat you kind of do it with like inventory best practices, and it's a terrible thing to say. But in the reality, there is there's nobility in what we do. You know, we okay. sometimes people they find their great career through us. You know, so. So we're not, I don't think, I think most staffing agencies are really people, people. And I don't think they really are like scrupulous and like, how do I get every penny out of the people I'm sending? But I, I it, it, we have to talk about it in those terms because that's kind of the language of business at times. I um, agree. Yeah, it is. It is kind of cringy when you talk about people as inventory. <laughs> <laughs> so, so on the topic of technology, before we really get into like the, the platform and, and VMS piece that, that you guys are you're really leading the charge in. You brought up another thing about database management that I think direct employers probably aren't doing as much. But there's a lot of tools that I've seen at the at the association or the conferences that do a lot of uh, database management. Where because that's the big challenge. If you've got fifty thousand, hundred thousand, or how many people in your database, like how do you stay in touch with everybody? How do you keep the records updated? And now through different automations, different software technology. It can go out and find updated phone numbers, updated emails, and go get resumes. Which this is a, this is a huge one, especially with a company trying to do this. Let's say someone applied to a job two years ago and they weren't a fit, but then they went out and they got two years of experience that would make them the perfect fit. If they're dealing with the old resume, they're never going to find that person in their own database. But if a staffing agency is using technology to basically constantly be updating that, they're going to have the freshest data about their candidates and know who's a miss. And that's someone that might never, never be on the direct employer's radar. So I think, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, money or value in how well an agency manages their, their talent pool. Right. And, and to that point is why we're never going to go away as an industry. Right. Yeah. You know, so that concern that, you know, current, currently, you know, you're able to go out and source candidates on your own, but again, those candidates are going to go stale but we are actively engaging candidates. That's what we do. Yeah. Companies don't always think about actively engaging candidates, right? right? And so that is why we will always be here because we will always be tapping people on the shoulder and saying, hey, do you want to go to work? Yeah. And that's something that a company cannot be, may not be able to do 24 seven. Right. They, and they could try to replicate it, but it would be more expensive and it would be taxing on the people in their, their company doing it. They would have to literally have an internal staffing agency, which I know some companies have gone that route, but it's yeah. not it's not the norm. Yeah, those are uh, the market cap on those companies are pretty high. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's larger than uh, some small countries. Yeah. GDPs, so, yes. So with the with the technology, see, I see this shifting because I I don't remember who it was at a recent conference. They made the comment that. The auto industry kind of ushered in where they're, they're no longer a car company. They're technology companies that build cars. And I think Tesla's made that comment. Yeah. Do you do you feel like that's the inevitability of staffing? Do you think we're going to have to become technology companies that offer staffing services? Such a good question, because we have that kind of debate internally, 
Um, you know, do we want to be a technology company? Do we want to be a staffing company? And then here at Express, are we a franchisor, right? First and foremost, we're a franchisor, right? right. I think that's that's who we are. And, you know, there's other franchise organizations in the staffing industry that that I think would say they're also franchisors first. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, and this is my personal opinion, um, there are a lot of good partners out there in the tech space that have built out tremendous tools, built out marketplaces, built out APIs that can keep staffing agencies on the leading edge of what's new without the staffing agency having, having to become a technology company, right? I think there's a giant investment if you want to move forward with being a technology company along with a staffing company, right? First, we're funding payroll. Now we're going to build out a technology team. When you think about that as well, like that's a lot of cash outlay. Right. That's a yeah. tough, that's a big lift. Yeah. Um, from a cash flow perspective. So and and what I think, you know, and I actually had this conversation yesterday, I think that utilizing, you know, whether it's Aviante here or Bullhorn or Job Diva or whoever it may be, you know, you're you're leaning on them to keep you at the front of the technology curve. Right. And that's you know, through their marketplaces, that's what they're doing. You know, that there's and and those clients or excuse me, those other kind of plugins or the folks that are in the marketplace are trying to get into that marketplace because they know that now they're going to be associated with staffing companies. Can you imagine going out and trying to align with who you think is the next big thing as a staff, as a staffing company and missing, right? If you're not right, right, what do you do next? Right now you, how many steps backwards did you take versus Maybe yeah. letting them play, you know, if Aviante or Bullhorn go out there and identify them as as a qualified marketplace, you know, member, then you kind of have to trust that, right? More than you do, and they more than you would if it was yourself doing it, right? Like they've they've kind of done the pre work for you. Um, so I think it, you know, I. So yeah, we go sense. back and forth. Like you could do it. You could become a technology company, but is it going to keep you on the front edge of the curve? I don't know. So I, I think, think so maybe this maybe the sweet spot is like embracing technology as part of your core DNA, but letting the technologists actually build it and stay in their swim lane, you know, and being experts at it, so you don't actually lose the core functionality of being a staffing agency. I really, think I the, think there's I think it's a good summary uh, there because I think you have to embrace it, right? It's the same thing with AI. You know, it's just, you know we have to embrace it as an industry uh, because it's it's where we're going. It's where everything's going, but at the same time, do we want to be the ones that are building it? I think that's the question, right? I don't, I don't. I don't. I've gone down that road of uh, mm-hmm. trying to spin up a, a, a software platform. And no, no, thanks. I'll leave it to the technologists. <laughs> that's, right. And they're, uh, that's, yeah. That's and that's, and again, you know, that's exactly what they do. That's what they're good at. And that's how they, they make their money. Right. So they're going to deliver a product that, meets the standard of the industry yeah right and they're you know and it and it it's not one size fits all with them right like i mean here at express yeah we're we're big you know but we also have 850 franchisees so we need you know what i mean it's 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 a bunch of small businesses working together to be this big thing and so we need to yeah have what hq needs from from a technology but we also need to have what the the franchisees need so the staffing companies right what they yeah. need and then also as a franchisor we need to be able to deliver the leading edge of technology so that we can attract new franchisees and help our franchisees attract talent to work within their small business right so it's when you think about all the different moving pieces of technology here at express it's it's a, a lot right <laughs> it's That's a lot wild. yeah I was just thinking, I was just thinking about like when you're describing that, like I know staffing is always like that dual sided marketplace, but then for you, like you have to be thinking about kind of a tri or quad sided marketplace because there's the, you're attracting a new franchise owners and obviously then partners. And yeah, that's a, that's a whole different ecosystem. Um, One thing you mentioned, and I know that you've, you've been in this industry nearly two decades, you know, you've been a franchise owner, you've been a selling branch manager, you've done a lot of the roles, you've worn all the hats. So you're, you're probably going to appreciate this question, I hope. <laughs> I know that typically when, when anybody buys, they typically are looking at, you know, quality, price, 
or speed or convenience, right? Like those three things, speed, convenience kind of lumped in together. And it's hard, you can't really deliver all three. And usually you can kind of really nail down maybe maybe two. Um, where do you think buyers are more prioritizing today? Do you think, because there's a lot of buyer reluctance. Do you think that it's because they're just holding out for better quality and they've been kind of under delivered? Or do you think they're really maybe leaning more like, hey, we're, we're going to sacrifice quality a little bit and we want more speed. You want more convenience, better pricing. Like, where do you, where do you think buyer's mindset is right now? Uh, I think first is pricing, right? I think we, we hear a lot of clients looking to optimize their vendors, which to me is a fancy way of saying. Cut your price. Price, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think, you know, we're seeing, so we're seeing that right now. And, and, it makes sense. I mean, for three years, we watched this thing go through the roof, right? Like we all, a macro effect on this industry of the of bill rates and price rate and price pay rates going up, you know, we were going to hit a ceiling at some point to where we were going to get some pushback, right? Yeah. And and here we are, you know, and so I think it's price first is what they're looking for. Now, I also think they're going to need what they need when they need it. So that's speed, right? Yeah. So they're going to ask for a time to fill requirement. You know, they're going to ask for um, retention. They're going to look for things like that as well. So I think if you're going to get the two, you know, and then the underlying, like if you find quality people, like usually, you know, they're, you're going to hit those KPIs, right? Like they're going to yeah. stay there longer. So it quality is what it is on the side. But I think the two things that clients are looking for right now are price and speed to delivery. Um, and again, the pricing makes a ton of sense. The speed thing is, they're using us like they used to use us. This is a contingent workforce. When we haven't, when they have an opening, they need to get that opening filled. They're not, you know, they're not really proactively looking until they need to proactively look. That's interesting right there, because I, I feel like, I feel like you really head on something there, Will, because like it really employers stereotypically, you know, kind of lumping everybody and not every employer fits this category, but they do. They're very reactive. They, they use staffing agencies in a very reactive fashion, which I feel like a lot of agencies then feel like they're behind the eight ball and kind of stressed out. But, but I believe agencies are always trying to sell proactive services. Like they're like, mm -hmm. hey, if you use this proactively and then we can get, we can learn your jobs, learn what you're hiring for. And like they try to do it. And, and maybe there's a mismatch there. Maybe the messaging of like, we want to be this proactive partner for you but companies just inherently use this reactively. Maybe there's some uh, misfit there. So I think what we're talking about is being a service or a commodity versus being a partner, right? I think that's really where where you're going with that. Like if you're yeah. reactive, then you're just being treated as a, a commodity, right? Yeah. Because it's going to be, hey, we need this now and we need to pay this much for it. And that's a commodity. That's what it yeah. is, right? But if you're a partner and you're having these proactive conversations with, with your client, you know, it, or you're watching their, you know, trends that you've had. If, if they're a long time customer, you know, you can go back and look and go, you know, hey, we see a spike in April every year, um, you know, and maybe in February you can reach out to them and say, hey, are we going to do this again? Is that what, you know, your sales trends are looking like, you know, and you know, we, the, the inventory count right now is really high, right? Manufacturing contracted again, inventory is way up. Yeah. So how do you shift your message to your current customers? Hey, we got a bunch of forklift guys over here ready to go you know, can, do you, do you need them? You know, how, what's manufacturing? Like, are you, are you more focused on getting product out the door than you are building the product? How can we realign what we're looking for to help you get to where you need to be? And that's a partner. You know what I mean? And those are the proactive conversations that I think set, set really successful organizations apart from those yeah. that are just order fillers. I think that makes a ton of sense. And I think that goes down to speaking of like partnership and whatnot, Going back to really the one of the three themes I wanted to talk about was like technology, because if, if your buyer is really looking for more convenience and speed and a lower price, then we have to operate at scale and we have to leverage technology to, to kind of automate or better manage some of the time consuming, low value tasks. So the recruiters have time to, to work at capacity. So talk to me about your viewpoint. Like, what is your opinion, your, your viewpoint on, you know, end to end staffing platform. You guys made a splashy play, you know, with uh, moving to Aviante once they acquired simple VMS. Um, like, what does that look like? Cause that's terrifying to most agencies to partner with a VMS at their own clients. Like why, why are you guys leaning all into that model? Yeah. I, so 
one, we have somebody dedicated to kind of drive that conversation. And that's that's the, one of the roles that I, I sit in is to drive the, the conversation between our franchisees, their clients, and initiating a, a conversation with Simple VMS, um, which it's a little different, right? You know, we're, we're actually, you know, as a channel partner or a vendor kind of going to our clients saying, hey, we'd like to introduce you to a VMS. You know, for years in this industry, it's been, let's not do that, right? That's let's keep the VMS. Part, yeah. Yeah, let's keep them away from it. Let's not get them in there. But you know, the partnership with with Simple is almost ten years old now here at Express, and and I think that you know that that really has created a, a big bond or trust with us, and they're a true strategic partner of ours. So we're able to to trust them when we introduce them to a client, right? And so I think it's it's taken time um, to educate our our franchisees on, hey, this is a value add. We're trying to use it as a you know a value add to them if they're you know, if they're a current customer, but if they're a prospect, this differentiates Express from the other staffing agencies are, that are out yeah. there and we're delivering a quality partner to them. So we trust that process. Um, but to your point on on kind of eliminating those medial or redundant tasks with technology, that's exactly what we need to do. We need to remove those kind of tasks so that we can focus on money-making activities. Like those are busy things, right? I used to, when I had my franchise, uh, you know, there was there were days where you're like, all right, I'm just gonna be busy today. I'm gonna make no money today because I have to get, huh. you know, I gotta get the checks cut. I gotta, you know, go to the post office. I gotta put an order in for the, you know, those are all those things that yeah. are kind of the cost of doing business. But if we can automate that and take that out of the hands of our employment specialists or, you know, front, front office, whoever it may be, and let, AI or let the piece of technology kind of drive that piece for you, then you can focus on getting to know the candidates, qualifying the candidates, getting to know the clients so that you can better make those matches, right? And that's going to deliver more return on investment. And at the same time, you're going to, and I, I don't want to scare anybody, but as a, as a former franchisee, right, you're able to do more with less, right? And that, yeah. you know, and that is a, that affects the bottom line. And again, we're talking about business, so we'll, we'll I'll stay in that space. So, yeah. you know, if you can have a positive effect on the bottom line of your franchisees by implementing a technology that allows them to be more efficient and focus on money making as opposed to being busy, yeah, that's a deliverable that you can't beat. I agree with that. And, and again, if you provide that, and there's some self-service functionality within like the VMS integration. So you're even taking some of that piece and off the plate of the recruiters of putting some of that that data in the system and then using the, the mobile app, there's some yeah. data entry that's coming off the plate. All those little removals of tasks or functions from the recruiter gives them more time and more capacity to 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 perform more, you know, work on more orders, fill more orders, earn more money, you know, and all really lowering costs. And I think that's that's what agencies need to be focusing on is how do you use how do you leverage technology to free up your recruiters and salespeople to do what they do best, but also operate your business at a lower price point so you can be more competitive and get that get the clients that are focused on price and speed and convenience and i think that's that's my opinion on where this industry has to go that's probably another you know five to eight year run as, as we're going to see a lot of that um until yeah. the industry catches up and that evens the playing field that's that's where that's where my mind is yeah i think the the latest number i saw was six to eight percent um of staffing companies are now in that platform space and so kind of what you just described is exactly what that end-to-end -end platform look is. So if only 6% or 8% on the high end are currently living there, we're good. It's, there's a big growth curve, you know, that, that needs to happen um, yeah. before everybody gets there and whoever can get there the fastest and do it right. Right. That's the right. We, you know, with yeah. technology, you can get it there, but does it always work? If you're there and it works and it works for both the clients and the talent, and the vendors or the staffing agency, a home run, right? You're so far, you're going to be so far ahead of everybody else who's late to that game. Um, it's going to, it's going to be such a differentiator um, and you're going to win market share, um, wallet share within client, it, all the, all the shares, you're going to win all that. I, I agree. And that's honestly, that's, that's why if you look at companies like Amazon, Walmart and Target, like they, they nailed the, the platform and yet some, it's some's physical, you know, some is completely online, but they they nailed the deliverable to both sides, the suppliers of whatever they're selling and to the customer experience. 
And it would be very hard to come up with a new Walmart today or a new Target or a new Amazon because yeah. they did get there and they won all the shares first, you know, right. and yeah. you're right. If only 68% of agencies are really doing this, there's still a lot of, a lot of blue ocean for, yeah. you know, someone to step in and fill that void and, and pick up a lot of that market share to be a, a platform staffing partner. And I think for, for Express, when you think about how many, I mean, we have 850 locations and we're, we're still brick and mortar and we're going to be that way. Right. Yes. So it's omni-channel for us. Like we're going to be able to deliver the solutions for both sides. So your example of Walmart and Target are perfect, right? If you want to do this completely on your phone, fine. You know, we'll, we'll have a conversation with you. There's going to be, but that's going to limit what you can probably do with us. Um, yeah. If we don't get our eyeballs on you, right. And take you through a couple of processes, yeah. but we're also going to have that place where you can go. Right. And if you have an issue you, and you want to go talk to somebody face to face, which I think in the customer service world, like that is such a freeing experience for somebody to be able to go. I know I can go there and I know I can sit down and have a conversation with somebody. Yeah. You know, I lean back on my my field experience and, and you know, owning my franchise. When somebody comes in on Friday and they don't their paychecks wrong and they're, you know, and they're worried about what they're going to be able to do over the weekend, whether it's I mean, it can be as 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 fundamental as food, gas, yeah. those type of things that we yeah, all kind of, some of us take for granted and, you know, others paycheck to paycheck, you know, it's, that's, it's a horrible feeling, Yeah. but at least they know they can come talk to somebody and sit down and tell their story because maybe that's all they need. They just need to be able to talk to another human. Yeah. And we deliver that in, in here at Express with all of our brick and mortar that we have out there. Um, and again, you know, with the franchisees being local, they get it. Right. They understand that that person lives in their community and they're going to be able to have a nice conversation with them, hopefully, about what happened, how we can offer a solution and go from there. But, you know, if you don't have that, if it's in a completely online experience, you're going to struggle a little bit there because it's a frustration. Right. It's an absolute frustration yeah. when you can't get to somebody when you really just want to talk to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually uh I think that's a good spot for us to to end our chat here today on a nice noble, you know, uh, kind of human uh, presence. And just to let the staffing agencies out, out there know that we're not going to be replaced, you know, stay human to human, stay true to your core of being a staffing agency and building strong relationships with all of your candidates, with all of your clients, but adopt the technology because that's going to help you be more efficient. It's going to help you be more, you know, cost competitive to, to win business and better serve your clients. And so, Will, I'm, I'm grateful for your time, man. I'm, I've been loving to get to know you and just, you know, pick your brain on these things. And I just, uh, I'm grateful for you being here. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Anytime, man. Really appreciate the opportunity and uh, had a great time talking with you. Awesome. Until next time, folks.